If you spend any amount of time studying early northern cultures, real frontier societies that endured brutal winters without modern insulation, you begin to notice something striking. The people who survived weren't relying on sheer toughness alone. They engineered their homes in ways that maximized every spark of heat, every ember, every breath of warm air. And nowhere is this ingenuity more obvious than in the Viking hearthstone system. For the next minute, stay with me, because this overlooked setup is the reason longhouses stayed warm enough for families, livestock, and warriors to survive nights that would freeze exposed skin in seconds. When you understand how it worked, you'll see how a simple arrangement of stones and airflow principles made Viking homes heat up faster and hold warmth far longer than other early medieval structures. Throughout the Norse world, from Iceland to Denmark to the fjords of Norway, the hearth wasn't just a fire pit. It was a deliberate heating system shaped by generations of trial, error, and survival-driven craftsmanship. Documented in archaeological digs at places like Lanceau Meadows and Borg, and confirmed through sagas describing winter routines, the Viking hearth was designed to trap and radiate heat instead of losing it to smoke and open air. Most modern people, you know, really underestimate the sophistication behind it. But once you break it down, it becomes clear that these communities actually used physics long before the language to describe it even existed. The secret begins with understanding why the hearthstone layout was more effective than a typical fire pit. In most early cultures, fire pits were, well, just shallow bowls of ash, where flame and fuel were kind of loosely contained. They produced heat, but most of it simply drifted upward and disappeared into a smoke hole. The Vikings, though, approached the problem differently. Instead of a round pit, they used long rectangular stone beds arranged right in the centre of the hall with carefully chosen stones, dense basalt, granite or soapstone, placed along the edges and even beneath the fire itself. These stones served as thermal batteries, absorbing heat while the fire burned and releasing that heat slowly once the flames died down. You can apply the same principle today. If you've ever built an outdoor fire on plain dirt and then tried it again with heavy stones forming the base, the difference is immediate. The stone setup radiates warmth long after the fire collapses. To recreate the Viking method, you would build a firebed about one foot deep, line it with dense rocks, and place flat stones around the perimeter. Light your fire directly on top of the stone bed, not above loose soil. As the stones heat, they stabilize the fire, reflect heat outward instead of downward, and create a more controlled burn. This results in faster heat build-up and better retention. Airflow control was the next part of the Viking advantage, and it's one of the most overlooked fundamentals of ancient heating. Vikings understood that a fire needs a steady but not overwhelming supply of oxygen. Too much wind and the fire burns unevenly. Too little and smoke fills the hall. They solved this by building longhouses with low entrances, raised seating platforms, and slanted roof vents. These features created a natural draft cold air, entered near the floor, fed the fire from below, 
and pushed smoke upward toward the vent, which was angled to prevent rain from entering while guiding smoke out. If you want to apply this today in a modern workshop or off-grid cabin, you can mimic the principle by ensuring the fire receives controlled air from below. One method is to carve a shallow air channel under the hearth or leave a gap beneath one side of the stone base. This acts like a primitive bellows system, drawing in air consistently and allowing the fire to burn hotter with less fuel. You'll notice that when airflow is controlled this way, wood burns longer and, well, produces more heat by volume. This is exactly what the Vikings needed to survive those long winter nights where every single stick of firewood really mattered. Positioning within the longhouse was another intentional decision that made the hearth so effective. The hearth was always placed at the exact centre of the structure, not along a wall. This allowed heat to, you know, radiate equally in all directions. The raised benches along the walls warmed quickly because they were made of wood, which absorbs and stores heat efficiently. Meanwhile, the stone bed kept the floor area warm enough for livestock or sleeping mats. Over time, the longhouse operated like a slow, warming oven, something only possible because the hearth was centralised. A practical example for modern off-grid living is to position heat sources as centrally as possible. Whether you're building a tiny home, a shed conversion or a survival shelter, putting the heat source in the centre warms the entire structure, while placing it against a wall loses up to half the radiant energy to the exterior. The Vikings weren't guessing. They were applying centuries of environmental learning. Maintenance and fire management also played a role in why Viking hearths heated so quickly. They didn't burn massive piles of wood. Instead, they used moderate stacks of split logs and added them gradually. Smaller fuel pieces heat stones faster because they burn cleanly and efficiently. They also stirred coals frequently which exposed hotter embers and maximised radiant output. Archaeologists often find longhouse hearths with layers of fine ash, proof of long-term controlled burns rather than large, wasteful infernos. To replicate this, focus on smaller, well-seasoned wood. Build multiple small coal beds through the evening instead of a single roaring fire. This keeps your stones charged with heat and maintains a steady temperature without sudden peaks and drops. The result is the same as what the Vikings achieved. A system that heats fast, stays warm for hours and wastes minimal fuel. The Viking hearth was more than a survival tool. It was a brilliant energy system designed through lived experience. When you combine thermal storage stones, controlled airflow, central positioning and efficient fuel management, you create a heating setup that outperforms many modern campfires and even rivals small stoves. If you want more historic engineering breakdowns and survival insights grounded in real archaeology and ancient craftsmanship, make sure you subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this video with anyone who appreciates old world ingenuity and stay tuned for more deep, practical history that still works today.